Meet Ken. Ken lives in Nairobi and like many of us, he's tired of frequent blackouts and rising electricity bills. So, he's finally made the decision. He's going solar. But now, he's stuck. Should he go for a 3 kilowatt hour or a 5 kilowatt hour system? Should he go off grid or pick a hybrid system? Is lithium better than gel batteries? And what about solar panels, inverters, and charge controllers? If you're like Ken, don't worry. Let's walk through every decision Ken has to make and the smart choices that could help you too. Step 1. Sizing 3 kilowatt hour versus 5 kilowatt hour system. Ken is torn between a 3 kilowatt hour system and a 5 kilowatt hour system. Here's the thing a 3 kilowatt hour system is good for basic use lights, TV, phone charging, a fridge, maybe a microwave once in a while. But a 5 kilowatt hour system? That's perfect if Ken wants to power more appliances like a washing machine, iron box, computer, maybe a water pump, and have some breathing room for future use. Step 2. Off-grid versus hybrid. Now, Ken has to choose between two system types, off-grid or hybrid. An off-grid system is fully independent, no Kenya power, no bills. But if it's cloudy for days and your batteries run out, you are in trouble unless you have a backup generator. A hybrid system uses solar during the day and can switch to Kenya power when needed. It's reliable, especially in areas where blackouts are unpredictable. So what should Ken pick? If he lives in a rural remote area with no access to KPLC or he wants full independence, off-grid is great. But if he's in town and wants a balance between savings and backup, hybrid gives him the best of both worlds. Step 3. Let's talk costs. Ken is also wondering, what's the damage to his wallet? Let's break it down. And keep in mind, these are rough 2025 market averages in Kenya. For a 3 kilowatt hour off-grid system, the solar panels, batteries, inverter, controller, wiring, and labor can cost approximately 350,000 to 450,000 Kenyan shillings. For a 5 kilowatt hour off-grid system with the same setup as above can cost about 550,000 to 700,000 Kenyan shillings. Now, for hybrid systems, they usually cost 100,000 to 200,000 shillings more than their off-grid versions since they include grid tie components. But remember, prices vary based on the brand, installer, and the battery type. Step 4. Lithium versus gel batteries. Now, this is a big one. Batteries. Ken has two main options, gel or lithium. Gel batteries are cheaper. They work well and are a decent option if you're on a tight budget, but they are heavy, bulkier, take up space, and typically last three to five years. Lithium batteries are the new favorite. They are lighter, charge faster, discharge deeper, and last 10 years or more. Plus, they take up less space and are more efficient. A smart tip for Ken, if he can stretch his budget, lithium batteries are a solid long-term investment, even though they cost more upfront. Step 5. Best solar panels in Kenya. Ken also wants to know, what are the best solar panels? Here's what to look for. Monocrystalline panels are the most efficient and perform well even on cloudy days. Great for places like Nairobi or Highland regions. Polycrystalline panels are slightly cheaper, but they need more space and aren't as efficient in low light. The top brands in Kenya are Jinko, Canadian Solar, JA Solar, and Trina Solar. These are all reliable and widely used. Ken should check for warranty 
at least 25 years for performance and buy from a trusted local installer. Step 6. The importance of inverter and charge controller. Ken almost forgot about two very important parts, the inverter and charge controller. The inverter is the brain of the system. It converts DC power from the panels to AC power that appliances can use. A good inverter ensures smooth performance and prevents overloads. The charge controller manages how power flows into the batteries, protecting them from overcharging or deep discharge. It extends battery life and boosts efficiency. So Ken's takeaway is this. Always match the inverter size to your power load and go for maximum power point tracking or MPPT charge controllers. They are more advanced and help you harvest more energy from your panels. Step 7. What's the return on investment? Now, here's the big question Ken had. How long before this solar system pays for itself? Let's say Ken goes for a 5 kilowatt hour hybrid system that will cost him around 700,000 shillings all inclusive. Currently, he pays about 10,000 to 15,000 shillings per month in electricity bills. With the hybrid system in place, his KPLC usage drops by 70% or more, reducing his monthly bill to about 2,000 to 3,000 shillings. That's a saving of roughly 8,000 to 12,000 shillings every single month. In simple math, at an average saving of 10,000 shillings per month, Ken will recover his investment in 6 to 7 years. But remember, his system will keep working for 15 to 25 years, meaning that after the break-even point, he's basically enjoying free energy. So the final thoughts... What did Ken decide? He went with a 5 kilowatt hour hybrid system using monocrystalline panels and MPPT controller and lithium batteries. Why? Because he wanted peace of mind, room to grow, and the ability to use KPLC if needed. He paid more upfront, but with his ROI timeline in sight, he's now saving thousands in electricity bills every year. And best of all, Ken finally stopped worrying about blackouts. Just like Ken, your solar journey starts with smart questions. Don't rush. Think about your energy use, your future needs, and your budget. Talk to experts, compare quotes, choose quality. And soon, you'll be enjoying the freedom of clean, quiet solar power. To learn about hybrid and off-grid solar systems, you can watch either video up next. I'll see you there.